This week on Focus Outdoors, we are going to hunt the rough grouse and American woodcock. We will be joining a good friend, Doug Collins, and pro staffer, Mark Haslip, to pursue this very wary upland bird, known as the king of game birds. The day and night before, we had very high winds that we knew would stir the grouse up and make them even more flighty than normal. So we hope that as hard as our dogs work, they would be able to help us put a few birds in the game bag. No matter what, we knew we'd have a great time. How could we not hunting the most exciting birds in the North Woods? I think it was right like where she is now, where she just was. I can kind of see grass there, so. Oh. Good job, Rosie. Dead bird, Rosie. Dead bird. Dead bird. <laughs> Rosie, get her. Take her right to the end of that, Mark. If you can. Come on. We were we were talking here about the woodcock maybe landing over in a dry piece that looks wet and I just turned around and Rosie was pointing and I just had enough time to swing around and a grouse flushed and as frustrating as this game can be when you least expect it that's when it happens that's when things can turn for you now we're gonna sex this bird If this had two dots, it would be a male. Since it has one dot right there, that is a female. I would say a young of the year. So, good job by Rosie. She's, she's had her ups and downs today just like we have. But if you keep at it, this is your reward. Super, super fun bird. We just recovered the grouse, um, but just before that, these woodcock had been flying out in this swamp grass, in this brush, and we thought, well, maybe there's enough dry ground for us to go out there, so we were going to try, but not only probably was it not a great idea, because if you drop a woodcock in here, the way their scent dissipates, we're probably going to lose them anyway, plus as we try to go, there's probably enough dry ground for the woodcock but not for us it's it gets wet so they know where to go when they're pressured even the woodcock I want to talk a little bit about this piece of cover we're in we just had a couple woodcock flushes 
a nice grouse flush and harvested by Tom Porker. This piece is nothing more than a bump. We came off a little bit higher piece. It's low, there's grass around us, and there's this little hump here. It's real isolated. Gets, I can promise you it gets no pressure other than us. You can also see if you look around a little bit, there's some beaver chewings. It gives you, tells you there's water close by, and there's evergreens in back for wind protection. So that gives the bird a little bit of security. There's some good food in here. And even in this time of year when we've had some rain, they still like to have some water available. It's up in a tree. That's uh, one thing, folks. I was just commenting to Brad here that she was way birdie on the ground and to always look up in the tree if the, she, the dogs don't produce a bird. And that one took us a while, but it finally blew out of a tree. So it was here. She was right. Good job. That's why you're so busy. Grouse in a tree and woodcock on the ground and oh. this is American woodcock. Um, Kono is in here busy, 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 busy. Grouse got out of a tree, which seems to be kind of our uh, deal today. There are a lot of birds coming out of the trees. Um, most of the woodcock from what I've seen today have been um, migrating through the area and this is probably towards the end. Um, it's late uh, last day of October. Um, they'll end up in either Louisiana, Texas, Alabama, somewhere down on the coast. Um, the long bill is to probe. They probe for invertebrates such as earthworms, that kind of thing. And one of the strange but unique things, their eyes are a little set back in their head, so when they're probing, they can actually see almost straight behind them. You know, un unlike us, we're predators, our eyes are in the front. Theirs, you can see, very much set back on their head. Their uh, ears are right here. Then they're probing, they can hear what's moving around in the ground. And their brain is actually in a cup, just like this. Um, by the size, this is a little male. Females are bigger. But uh, dark meat, love to eat them. And uh, quite a prize that the woods gives to us. So that's the American woodcock. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. No matter the size, age, or activity level of your best friend, you want a dog food that's natural, feeds great, and is full of all the goodness you demand. 
That's what we pack into every bag of Country Vet Naturals. Country Vet Naturals are just what the name says, natural goodness in every bag. We also make grain-free cat and dog food and treats. Learn more and find a dealer at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Well, as you might be able to tell, I spent a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays fields, doing exhibitions, or bird hunting, I always trust my shooting skills to the Rio Elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot Rio Elite. Make your next day on the water even better with Airwave Pedestal, the only air suspension system that can be custom adjusted to the weight of the rider. No unreliable springs, no oil-filled shocks to leak. Our patented design utilizes a two-stage suspension system to smooth out the roughest ride, a limiting travel to an industry-leading two inches. This boating season, enjoy your time on the water to the fullest. Find out how at airwavepedestal.com. Hunting in northern Minnesota today, actually been super frustrating day. We moved like four grouse, two woodcock, and saw one woodcock. Mark did see a grouse. Um, today, it's very calm in the woods. We had some wind overnight. The birds are stirred up pretty good. Uh, a lot of them were just blowing out wild. Um, I still keep track of the birds in the cover to keep my cover um, healthy. Don't want to overshoot them. That's what these little uh, counters are. So what I'm going to do so far, four grouse, and we have a couple woodcock. And uh, basically what that's going to tell me for future reference, um, can we hunt this some more? Do we have to let it rest for a year or two? Those kinds of things. I, I chart this from the opening of the year uh, right to the very last day. And I do it for each and every culvert. Um, the birds are so wild today, uh, one of my more reliant dogs today is just acting up. She's very frustrated today. The one bird I did see her point, she actually blew it out. You just, you have to take them, get them back under control, continue on, and hopefully she'll calm down after we get a couple pointed birds. But that's the reality of grouse hunting. That's what we're doing. It's still a ton of fun. So I always say, come on out and enjoy it. We just started this walk here. We're hunting this piece a little different. Normally we hunt it low to high. And today we're hunting it high to low. Uh, bird just come up. The dog was working back up this way. Jumped off of this little piece of a deadfall there. Come up here and I shot it and was lucky enough to harvest it. That's a nice bird. That looks like a little bit older bird, Mark. I want to show this to the if you get one of these, take a look at all the different colored, the feather patterns on them. They're just, they're not just a brown or a dark bird that you see walking somewhere. There's all kinds of patterns. Beautiful rough on that bird, man. Just pretty, just yeah, pretty bird. Well, we're doing some grouse and woodcock hunting here. Uh, pretty much the flight birds are gone. The, the number of birds is down, but I'm seeing some encouraging signs here. There's some woodcock splash in a very typical spot. It's wet, it's darker ground, so that's going to warm up a little faster. And since they feed on invertebrates and insects and groundworms, that's the type of ground they're looking for. And it's soft like that, it's wet, it's very easy for them to probe with their beaks. So we're hoping maybe we can pick up a woodcock or two here on the way out. Come here, Katie, come here. 
Right here. You can get through there. Come on. Right here. Right here. There. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. All right. Good job. That's a that's a little bit bigger woodcock than we had earlier today. That's a female. They all generally run a little bit bigger. Oh, they're gorgeous. That coloration makes them so hard to find and all that. Yep. That's incredible. Another good one, Dougie. Yep. Another good one. Let's see if we can pick up a couple more. That was a point. There it goes. Good girl, Bug. Brad and I were just talking here. Uh, Katie's pointed a couple grouse now, and they've been right around these pine trees. It's getting towards evening. They're picking the sunny side of the little pine islands. They're sunning up, they're picking a little bit of food, and then they'll go up in these pine trees and roast. Uh, it's getting to be that time of day. But that was a great observation by Brad, and those are the little things that you gotta notice if you're gonna have some success grouse hunting. was I saying Bradley a few minutes ago coming up to this edge thought there might be another one there was and I just got another lesson by the grouse so don't fall asleep ever I just did and I got burned And if you can see Katie right where she is down in that cover down there, folks, right where she is, that bird went right to the edge of that cover, and that's where it held up. So she didn't even have a chance to get down there and point it for me, but that's all right. Wow, what fun. It's exciting. Keeps you young. Us old gray-haired people, we need something to keep us young, and this is it. Isn't it Brad the camera? It man? sure does keep you young. <laughs> Good girl, Katie. What cock? Yep. Did you see it? Yep. Dead bird. I think she's on it. Ooh, fell in that grass. Dead bird, honey. You got a good mark? Keep your mark. Straight ahead of me. Katie, dead bird in here. Katie. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Dennis Foster here. I'd like to introduce you to the Dorado catch and release boat latch system. It's back the trailer into the water, pop the cord and away we go. Once our day in the water is done, we simply roll the boat up onto the bunks until it achieves contact with the bow eye. It clicks securely into place, away we go. We are exclusive partners with B2Outdoors.com. That's where you're going to want to go and order your very own system. You can enter the promo code ITIMEPROMOTIONS and receive free shipping on your items.
When it comes to dog food and treats, you want something natural. A dog food or special reward that feeds great is made in the USA and helps your best friend live a long and healthy life. That's what you get with Country Vet Naturals, natural goodness in every bag. And for those of you who want grain-free, we've got that too. Find a dealer and learn more about Country Vet Naturals dog food, cat food, and treats at countryvetnaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Dougie, we've been hunting together for years and years and years. Yes. You guys, since I went to uh, college with Rick, right. all them years ago, early, well, we won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier times. Earlier times. But when I first started coming up here, everything was old growth. Remember that? Right. The land still held birds. I was always surprised by that. Because yes. it wasn't your typical, quote unquote, you look in a book and that's grouse cover. Right young successional force that kind of thing um you guys do hunt grouse when i come up in a little bit on your own right. but you're big deer hunters right how has that affected since you guys have logged this off over the years has the deer hunting gotten better or is it different or what do you see in that um it was a little different when we first we logged this off about 12 years ago okay and it was different before when it was first logged off it didn't hold the deer like it used to. They were just passing through. Okay. And then when the new growth came up, it started holding them, and okay. now it's been holding them more. Before we used to w drive this, walk through it, yep. and push deer. Now, well, you know, it's so yeah. thick you can't do that. So we've yeah. got stands around yeah. that we hunt. Yeah. The reason, really, you, when you guys quit driving deer out here, is because of the buckthorn. Right. Now that's an invasive species. This time of year, like I said, it's last day of October. The only thing with green leaves on it is buckthorn. buckthorn. Yeah. And it makes it, and it spreads. It's like, it, it's like a virus almost in the right. woods. Since you've noticed the buckthorn, anything eat that buckthorn? Is anything, I mean, what have you noticed about that since it's really popped up up here? Some birds do. Okay. Because we'll see the droppings either, you know, on our sidewalk or around the garage or on our vehicles, unfortunately, yeah. that's the blue. Yep. you know from the buckthorn berries but mostly not when you walk through you see most of the berries are still there that's what i noticed that's yeah. why i kind of asked you about that i mean you live this every day right but when i came up i saw the dogwood berries are gone yep uh high high bush cranberries are gone choke cherries choke are gone. cherries are gone all that stuff's gone and i i'm very surprised that they hardly touch those it's a dark blue berry right now deer eat those at all or no I have not seen a deer nibble on those at all. And you know what else I've noticed? And tell me if I'm right on this, where that buckthorn has moved in, it's wiped out a lot of the aspen pop or whatever yeah. you want to call right. it, hasn't it? Yep. So have you talked to anybody about that? I mean, you know, we've talked over the years, we need to do something, we need to do right. something. I have I did talk to someone from the DNR last week. Okay. And he said, He's going to get me some information on spraying okay. for it. I don't know since it's so thick in here right. how good that's going to work. Right. The best thing I've heard is just cut it down. Okay. You know, and, but there's so much of it. How do you cut it down and dig it out? And, le and then leave the good. Yeah, right. You know, it, it's, right. You, you hate to destroy the whole area just to get rid right. of the buckthorn, but right. maybe that's what has to be done for a while. Yeah. Um, I think another good source too, and, and I've done a lot of work with these folks, the Rough Grouse Society. Mm -hmm. um, 
as soon as we get a, a little time, get their biologist, we'll have him come out and look at this too because I'm a little concerned like you are that the buckthorn's going to be the only thing left on on this specific 30, 40 acres. I'm right. mad. It's really crazy. Right, and like you saw earlier, it's moved across the township road yep. by around my house. Yep. You know, there's more there than I've ever seen before. Yep. And even I've noticed here, this never used to have buckthorn. Right. But if you look at this piece of ground that your neighbors own here, right. all these green leaves, that's what uh -huh. buckthorn is. Right. But I, I was just curious how that's affected your deer hunting. I know it's affected the grouse hunting because it makes it almost impossible, you know, to have any chance to take a bird out of there. Right. Right. Um, and it's a little gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I've got a yeah. scar. <laughs> Practicing for deer hunting. Right, right. So, anyway, thanks for a great hunt, Doug. Sure. I really appreciate you're it. You're welcome back anytime. Yeah, I it love you guys. You've always treated me like gold. I appreciate well, that. Well, you're a brother, so. There you go. Thank you. And this guy's like a, you know, stepbrother. The one that we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do want to thank Doug. Uh, this is a real special place to me. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah, any, any, it like I said, anytime you guys are welcome back. Yeah, we appreciate it. It's Mark and I have probably had as much fun with you guys on this piece of ground <laughs> as any people we've hunted with and any piece of ground we've ever been on. Well, good. So, I remember one of the news. first times we met the boys, we were hunting up by Tom's place up there. Yeah, and uh -huh. one jumped in a bush right next to me and I called, and he's standing, it might have been Matt standing next to me. There's a grouse right there and he's going. And I, I started to laugh because I'd seen it before, but yeah. he hadn't. You know, <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I remember that day we got into a bunch of woodcock and the boys and their eyes were that big all day. Yep. It was awesome. And in all these years, those are the things I remember. Yeah. Stuff and it, like that. And for the kids, it's so much fun, you know, hunting with you guys because we don't have dogs. Right. And it's one thing to just go out and walk, right. you know, in the woods and grouse it, hunt and it's different. for woodcocks. Once you get a dog, it's a whole lot different. Yeah, I was mentioning to Brad on our way out of this last piece here. I said, it's amazing how hard those dogs will work for you. Right. I mean, yep. it's they, they, their hearts are nothing but hunt. That's yep. all they want to do, and they want to do it for you. And it's yep. it's yep. a special bond. And, and even Jeannie has said that, because she's not a hunter at all. Yep. But she's watched the dogs and stuff work, and yep. she goes, that's just so fun. I'd like to go out and just walk and yep. watch the dogs work. We'll have to take her. Yeah. Take, take her in the her. spring for woodcock. Yeah, Let's there take her through go. here. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice to your wife, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> She's the reason that the boys are here, you yeah, know. That's true, that's true. <laughs> so anyway, thank you again. Ben. You're welcome. Appreciate yeah. it, man. A diesel train rolls down the line as I'm headed for the land of corn and rye There is a place I'm always satisfied Full of remedies to ease my worried mind Like pulling catfish on the banks of Cherry Cove